Over the years, I've seen a wide range of mistakes done by new San Pedro growers, resulting in scars, rotting, and in the most severe cases, death. So, while a lot of the info here will seem obvious to experienced growers, I felt it is necessary to dedicate a video to these mistakes, so that beginners don't make them, and so that many plants can be saved. Mistake number one is unnecessary surgery. Sometimes black spots can appear on your San Pedro. They can be black blisters that are hard to the touch, or rot spots that are soft to the touch with black ooze coming out of them. Both instances generally are not a big deal and will not spread to the rest of the plant. Yet I've seen people carving out entire sections of the San Pedro to remove the damaged areas. Please don't do that. If unsure, post some photos of your plants on a San Pedro message board and see what the experienced growers have to say. Mistake number two, putting cuttings in the fridge or freezer. You'd be surprised how often this one comes up in the San Pedro groups in Facebook or Reddit. People buy cuttings and store them in their fridge or freezer. In the fridge, the high humidity and lack of air circulation will kill the cutting in a matter of days. In the freezer, death will come much sooner, after a few hours. As soon as the plant freezes, it's dead. And then when you take it out, it will turn to mush. The proper way to store cuttings is on a shelf or on top of a table, preferably outside if it's not too cold, as the air circulation will be optimum. Mistake number three, planting a cutting upside down. There is a right way up for planting a San Pedro middle cut. Just look at one of its areoles. This is the part where the spines grow from. The areole is usually angled slightly upwards towards the sky, whereas the spines will often, but not always, point in the other direction, towards the ground. Also, above the areole, you will often see a V-shaped or straight indentation. If you plant a middle cut upside down, it will never grow and will end up dying, unless, of course, you flip it the right way up. Mistake number four, planting a cutting too deep. The deeper you plant a cutting in the soil, the more likely it will rot. You should plant it just low enough so that the plant is stable. Bear in mind it will become more firmly anchored in the pot when it has grown roots. If need be, you can support it with bamboo sticks. If you decide to plant it deeper, then you can put an inch of stones between the cutting and the soil to isolate the green flesh from the soil. Once the green flesh has calloused, then you are a lot less likely to get rot. Mistake number five, planting freshly cut pieces. The first time my dad was given a cactus cutting by a neighbor, it was a San Pedro. And what my dad did is replant it directly into the soil with the cut hand still wet. Surprisingly enough, the plant survived. That was very lucky, as often pathogens in the soil will make the plant rot. If you have some freshly cut pieces of San Pedro, you need to let the cut hands heal themselves before replanting them. The healing process takes about one week per inch of diameter. So a three inch wide cutting will take approximately three weeks to heal. Mistake number six, letting the pots sit in water. If you use saucers together with your pots, do not let water sit in there as it can waterlog the roots, ultimately causing the plant to rot. I do not use saucers on my pots. I let the water run off on my terrace. However, if you need to use saucers, because the plants are inside your apartment, for instance, then make sure you drain them. Especially in the winter, as cacti hate the combination of wet and cold on their roots. Mistake number seven, treating pests without identifying them. This is a mistake I've made myself when I was just starting out with cacti. I mistook harmless springtails for dangerous thrips. Do not treat plants or get rid of them unless you have positively identified the insects. That includes looking at one of the bugs under a microscope or taking a macro photo of one and then comparing it with images found on the internet. Like I explained in my video, the five most common pests on the San Pedro cactus and peyote. Mistake number eight, treating plants in the morning. Each type of pest that attacks the San Pedro calls for a different treatment. And many of these treatments are incompatible with sunlight. 
in which case it is best to apply them at the end of the day when the sun is fading into the horizon. Both soapy water and neem oil can burn the skin of the cactus when it is exposed to the sun, which is why it is a good idea to apply them in the evening. And as an added precaution, you could even spray water on them the next morning to rinse them. As for nematodes, which are used to combat fungus gnats, they will also die if you apply them during daylight. Apply them at night so that they have the time to seek refuge in the soil before the sun comes up. Mistake number 9. Giving the San Pedro too much sun. The general assumption is that cacti need a lot of sun, which is why a lot of people put their San Pedro in full sun all day. That is not good, especially if you live in a place where the sun is fairly strong. Very often I've seen plants completely yellowed by all day sun exposure. It is a process that cannot always be reversed and that will prevent the plant from growing. You should always start by giving your plants less hours of sun to keep them looking green or even bluish. If they are turning yellow, then they are getting too many hours of sun. Of course, if you live in a colder place where the sun is not as strong, then your San Pedro's may tolerate more hours of full sun. Mistake number 10. Leaving your San Pedro in a heated room during winter. This is a common mistake done by people who have San Pedro's inside their house. Their plants will grow full width during the summer, then they will grow thin during the winter. This is because the temperature from the heater will trick the plant into thinking it's still the growing season. However, the sun rays won't be there to match the temperature and as a result, the San Pedro will grow thin or etiolate. It will not look good because its growth will be irregular. It is best to place your San Pedro outside in the winter, providing you don't live somewhere too cold, or otherwise let it hibernate in a dark room with cool temperatures. Of course, always above freezing point. That's it for this video. If you have enjoyed it, make sure you hit like and subscribe. And check out my other videos all about growing sacred cacti, such as the San Pedro cactus and the peyote. There will soon be another video of 10 beginners mistakes, and that one will be dedicated to San Pedro and peyote seedlings. So make sure you tick the notification bell to get informed about it as soon as it is uploaded. And if you are wondering where to buy properly identified San Pedro seeds and seedlings with free worldwide shipping, check my other video, where to buy San Pedro seeds and seedlings. All for now, I'll see you guys and girls again soon.